Introducing the Beanie, the revolutionary seating system that puts a child's development and independence at the heart of its design. How to unpack and assemble the Beamy seating system. All parts will be contained in polythene bags, with each one clearly labelled. Carefully check you have all the correct parts. Several adjustments will require the use of the multi-tool or long-handled Allen key, which is supplied with each seat. Attaching and attaching seating unit to chassis. Before attaching the seat base, ensure the locking latch at the front is released. If the locking latch is locked, then the following steps should be completed. Locate the right and left grey locking latch release buttons at the front of the seat. Simultaneously rotate the buttons towards the centre of the seat and then press inwards. An audible click will be heard when the latch is released. Once the locking latches are released, the seat base can be placed on the chassis. Lift the seat base with both hands at either side of the seat base. On the rear of the seat base, there are two hooks, which are to be aligned with the rear tube of the chassis interface. Rotate the front of the seat down, pressing down firmly until an audible click of the locking latches locking is heard. Check that it is secure by pulling up on the front and rear of the seat core. To detach the seat, locate and release the locking latches as shown. Then reverse the attachment steps. Attaching and detaching extendable push handle. Small and medium chassis, high-low only. The push handle is attached to the high-low chassis by inserting the two lower stems into the receiving tubes as shown. The push handle has safety poppers, which need to be pressed in when inserting the lower stems. Push the stems in until the poppers protrude from the other end of the receiving tubes. Secure the handle in place by tightening the locking bolts. To detach the handlebars, reverse step, then press in the safety poppers and pull the handlebar tubes out of the lower stems. Attaching the femoral bars. First, secure the hardware into the front two curved slots on the underside of the seat base. Ensure the split washer goes between the larger plane washer and the head of the bolt. Place the locking plate between the moulding and the nut. Secure the nut in place so that the end of the bolt sits flush with the end of the nut. The locking plate should be free to move along the bolt between the moulding and the nut. Orientate the locking plate so that a short edge faces forward. Insert the femoral bar into the cavity in the seat base, ensuring that the locking plate is retained within the femoral bar. Insert the countersunk screw into the seat base cover plate and secure underneath with the nut supplied and retained with the recess in the moulding. Repeat for the other side. Attaching the leg stem. Before attaching the upper leg stem, ensure the clamp is loosened. Then, slot the round boss of the upper leg stem into the clamp from the inside face and retighten the clamp using the Allen key. It may be required to adjust the position of the femoral bar to allow for the upper leg clamp to be inserted. To do this, loosen the bolt on the underside of the seat base and move to a suitable position. Attaching the basic, split and contoured seat hardware. The front seat plate of the basic, split and contoured seat secures to the receivers on the seat base. First, locate the downward pointing prongs at the front of the seat plate and the upper slot in the receivers at the end of the femoral bars. Slot the prongs into the left and right receivers, ensuring the two holes on each side align. Once the seat plate prongs are located, securely tighten using the four bolts and the Allen key. Attaching the contoured seat. The contoured cushion assembly is secured to the seat plate using Velcro. Located on the underside of the contoured cushion assembly and the top surface of the seat plate. To attach the contoured seat to the seat base, align the front of the seat base platework with the front of the contoured seat foam. Press down to secure the Velcro. Attaching the backrest. To attach the backrest, locate the backrest receiver at the back of the seat base. Open up the receiver lock paddles at the back of the seat base by pulling horizontally outwards on the paddles and then rotating upwards. Place the base of the backrest into the receiver, ensuring it is as deep into the receiver as it can go. 
Rotate the paddles downwards and push inwards to secure the backrest in place. Check that it is secure by pulling up on the backrest and moving it forward and back. Attaching the footrest. To attach the footrest, orientate the locking plate within the lower leg stem so that the short edge faces upwards. Slot the lower leg stem over the end of the upper leg stem, ensuring that the locking plate is retained within the upper leg stem extrusion. Secure in place with the bolt using the Allen key. The individual footrests can be attached independently, whereas the single foot plate requires both lower leg stems to be slotted onto the upper leg stems simultaneously. Attaching the armrest. To attach the armrest, locate the slot on the sides of the seat base and orientate the armrest with the adjustment cam levers facing outwards. Place the armrest stem into the slot and push downwards. Check that the armrest has self-locked by pulling upwards on the armrest. Attaching the sandals. Insert the required attachment bolt along with the retention plate. Place a rubber lid on both the top and bottom of the sandal. Fasten using the four screws provided. To remove or replace the attachment bolt, reverse this process. To attach the sandal, place it on the footplate so that the attachment bolt goes through the slot in the footplate. To secure, place the rubber washer, metal washer and knob onto the attachment bolt on the underside of the footplate and tighten. Attaching the ankle huggers. To attach the ankle huggers, slide the webbing through the side slot in the footplate. Loop the webbing back up and through the bottom and then top of the triglide. Finally, to lock the webbing in place, pass it through the bottom of the triglide again. Attaching the ankle wraps. To attach the ankle wrap, feed the lower and upper poppers of the ankle wrap under and over the back arch of the sandal and snap together. Attaching the booties. To attach the booties, slide the webbing through the side slot in the footplate. Loop the webbing back up and through the bottom and then top of the triglide. Finally, to lock the webbing in place, pass it through the bottom of the triglide again. Attaching the lateral bracket. Basic backrest. To attach the lateral bracket to the basic backrest, place the T-nut into the vertical slot from the front side of the backrest platework. Mesh the two side of the radial clamps together and locate the protrusion into the slot in the bracket. Locate the opposite protrusion of the radial clamp into the slot of the backrest, ensuring the radial clamp sits flush with the surface of the platework. Ensure the T-nut nests between the two surfaces of the radial clamp at the front of the backrest. Place the split washer, then the plane washer, onto the bolt and pass it through the hole in the radial clamp, engaging the threads of the T-nut, secure in place with the Allen key. Attaching the lateral bracket, moderate and complex backrest. To attach the lateral bracket to the moderate and complex backrest, Place the T-nut into the slot in the lateral bracket. Mesh the two sides of the radial clamps together and locate the protrusion of the radial clamp into the slot in the opposite side of the lateral bracket. Place the radial clamps into the recess at the front of the thoracic moulding, ensuring the protrusion of the radial clamp drops into the vertical slot. Place the split washer, then the plane washer, onto the bolt and pass it through the vertical slot at the back of the thoracic moulding, engaging the threads of the T-nut. Secure in place with the Allen key. Attaching the slim lateral. To attach the slim lateral to the lateral bracket, first place the machined boss into the corresponding slot in the slim lateral plastic pad. Position this assembly against the inside surface of the lateral bracket so that the bracket locates into the recess of the plastic pad and the machine part locates in the slot of the lateral bracket. Place the plane washer onto the bolt and pass it through the threaded hole in the machined part and secure in place with the Allen key. Attaching the complex lateral. 
To attach the complex lateral to the lateral bracket, first place the nut into the recess of the lateral plastic moulding. Position this assembly against the inside surface of the lateral bracket, so that the bracket locates into the recess of the plastic moulding. Place the plane washer onto the bolt and pass it through the hole in the moulding, engaging the threads of the nut. Secure in place with the Allen key. Attaching the protraction pad. To attach the protraction pad, align the two holes of the protraction pad platework with the corresponding holes of the lateral bracket, ensuring the bend in the platework points away from the lateral pad. Place the two bolts through these holes and secure in place on a rigid bracket. Secure the bolts with two nuts provided and a 10mm spanner. Attaching the hip guides, basic backrest. To attach the hip guides to the basic backrest, place the T-nut into the hole at the front of the basic backrest platework, ensuring the long edge of the T-nut is in line with the rectangular plate. Place the bracket into the recess at the back of the basic backrest platework. Place the split washer, then the plain washer, onto the bolt and pass it through the slot, engaging the threads of the T-nut. Secure in place with the Allen key. Attaching the hip guides, moderate and complex backrest. To attach the hip guides to the moderate and complex backrest, place the T-nut into the slot at the front of the hip guide bracket. Place the bracket into the recess in the front of the sacral moulding, ensuring the short edges of the T-nut are in line with the top and bottom surfaces of the recess. Place the split washer, then the plane washer, onto the bolt and pass it through the hole at the back of the sacral moulding, engaging the threads of the T-nut, secure in place with the Allen key. Attaching the small basic backrest spacer. To attach the small basic backrest spacer, remove the cushion cover from the backrest and remove the four screws, top and bottom, to separate the backrest platework from the clamps. Secure the spacers using the four longer screws onto the top and bottom clamps. Place the backplate spacer onto the front surface of the lower clamp moulding. Reattach the backrest platework by securing the four screws, top and bottom. Attach the cushion foam, secure using the four screws and a 10mm spanner. Attaching the headrest. To attach the headrest, Ensure the clamp is open by loosening the bolt and releasing it from the other side of the clamp. Place the clamp over the top bar of the backrest and centralise. Clamp together by using the Allen key. Attaching the tray. Before inserting the tray, ensure that the cam lever, located at the front of each armrest, is open. To attach the tray, insert the tray tubes through the centre of the armrest ensuring that the tray tube protrudes out the other side of the receiver. Once the tray is in the desired position, the cam lever should be tightened securely. Attaching the butterfly harness. To attach the butterfly harness, first locate the cam buckles at the top rear area of the backrest. Pass the webbing through the cam buckle and secure in place by clamping down. The bottom connection points are on the back of the seat base. Pass the webbing through the cam buckle at the back of the seat core and secure in place by clamping down. Attaching the rain canopy. To attach the rain canopy, the rain canopy backrest tube needs to be installed. To remove the existing backrest tube, loosen the bolts of the backrest height adjustment clamp and shoulder pad clamp and raise the tube up to the maximum height. Press in the poppers at the sides of the tube and lift to full release the backrest tube. Slide the rain canopy bracket onto the backrest. Slide the shoulder pad clamp onto the rain canopy backrest tube and secure the bolts. Place the ends of the backrest tube into the receivers of the backrest height clamp. Press in the poppers at the sides and push the backrest tube down further. Tighten the bolts of the backrest height adjustment clamp. To attach the rain canopy, slide the connectors down and over the receiver 
and rotate the clip inwards to snap into position. Attaching and detaching elbow blocker. Remove the two washers and bolts. Position the elbow blocker bracket so that the edge of the pad rests on the top surface of the tray and align the holes. Reattach the two bolts and washers and secure using the Allen key. Attaching the four point belt. To attach the four point belt, pass the grey webbing through the upper slot in the seat moulding and then through the cam buckle. Pass the black webbing through the cam buckle at the front. Pull the webbing taut and secure the cam buckles. Ensure the belt is orientated with padding facing towards child. Attach the buckle at the front to secure the user. Attaching the pelvic cradle. Place the cradle on the seat base cushion. The pelvic cradle is labelled to indicate the correct orientation. Attach the rear velcro strap up into the cavity within the thoracic backrest cushion. Pass the black webbing through the cam buckles at either side of the front of the seat and secure the cam buckles. Pass the grey webbing through the cam buckles at either side of the back of the seat and secure the cam buckles. Attach the buckle at the front to secure the user. Attaching the dynamic back. To attach the dynamic backrest, the static backrest plate must first be removed. Remove the two top and back bolts and remove the cover moulding. Remove the central bolt and the static backrest plate. Align the holes of the aluminium bracket of the dynamic back assembly with the holes on the seat base. Secure using the five bolts provided. Rotate the dynamic back assembly around so that the holes in the aluminium block align and secure using the two bolts provided. Attaching the shoulder wing upgrade, moderate backrest only. To attach the shoulder wing upgrade, the shoulder blank moulding must first be removed by unscrewing the three screws holding it in place using the Allen key. Remove the shoulder blank moulding and replace with the shoulder wing upgrade ensuring that it is orientated in such a way that the head of the bolt is pointed upwards. Secure in place with the three screws using the Allen key. Do not over tighten. Attaching the angle offset on the shoulder section. Moderate backrest only. To attach the angled shoulder spacer, remove the four screws to separate the moulding from the clamp. Place the backplate pacer onto the front surface of the clamp moulding. Secure the angle shoulder spacer using the four longer screws. Reattach the shoulder moulding by tightening the screws into the angled shoulder spacer. Attaching the pommel. The pommel attaches to the basic seat only. To attach the pommel, open the cam lock at the front of the seat and place the pommel bracket through the opening in the seat cushion and into the receiver slot on the seat. To secure in place, push down firmly on the cam lock. Orientate the pommel so that it sits external to the seating area. Attaching the femoral guides. To attach the femoral guide, slot the femoral guide stem into the receiver on the seat and press downwards. Check that the femoral guide has self-locked by pulling upwards on the femoral guide. Fitting the cushions, covers and support harnesses. The BME seat has a range of colourful covers and support options. We list the step-by-step -step instructions on how to attach the upholstery and support harnesses. Attaching the femoral covers. To attach the femoral guide cover, slot the cover over the end of the femoral guide. Secure in place with the snap fasteners at either side of the metal stem. Attaching the basic seat cushion. To attach the basic seat cushion to the back of the seat, locate the row of snap fastener tabs at the back of the seat base. Slot the fastener tabs between the seat cushion and the webbing and secure in place with the fasteners.
To attach the front of the basic seat cushion, locate the snap fasteners at the front of the seat base. Drop the front flap of the seat cushion down and secure in place with the fasteners. Attaching the split seat cushion. To attach the split seat cushion to the back of the seat, locate the row of snap fastener tabs at the back of the seat base. Slot the fastener tabs between the seat cushion and the webbing and secure in place with the fasteners. To attach the front of the split seat cushion, locate the fasteners at the front of the seat base. Drop the front flap of the seat cushion down and secure in place with the fasteners. Attaching the contoured seat cushion. To attach the contoured seat cushion, first separate the foam from the fabric cover. Align the front edge of the foam with the first contour of the seat base and press down to Velcro in place. Stretch the foam so that the back edge of the foam and the back edge of the seat base are aligned and press down to Velcro in place. Ensure the slots in the foam run from side to side. Slide the front of the seat cushion fabric over the front of the seat and stretch the back section over the back and press down to Velcro in place. Attaching the basic backrest foam. To attach the basic backrest foam, locate the holes at the top and bottom of the foam. Place the washer on the screw and pass the screw through the holes in the foam and the corresponding holes in the platework. Using a 10mm spanner, secure all four screws in place with a nut so that the end of the screw sits flush with the end of the nut. Attaching the basic backrest cover. To attach the basic backrest cover, slide the top of the cover over the top of the backrest and secure in place with the snap fasteners. Slide the bottom of the cover underneath the bottom of the backrest and secure in place with the snap fasteners. Tuck the stretch fabric in between the foam and the platework along both sides of the backrest. Attaching the sacral cover. To attach the sacral cover, align the cover with the moulding and secure in place with the snap fasteners at the sides and underneath the moulding. Attaching the thoracic backrest cover. To attach the thoracic cover, slot the top of the sacral cover into the cavity on the underside of the thoracic cover. Align the thoracic cover with the moulding and secure in place with the snap fasteners at the top and bottom. Attaching the shoulder section cover. To attach the shoulder cover, slot the top of the thoracic cover into the cavity on the underside of the shoulder cover. Align the shoulder cover with the moulding and wrap the cover over both ends, securing in place with the zips. Ensure the cutouts at the back of the shoulder cover align with the harness connectors or allow for the harness connectors to pass through. Attaching the hip pad covers. To attach the hip pad covers, slide the cover over the moulding. Secure in place with the Velcro. Attaching the slim lateral covers. To attach the lateral covers, undo the Velcro and slide the cover over the plastic pad with the Velcro facing downwards. Secure in place with the Velcro. Attaching the hugging lateral. To attach the flexible lateral covers, Undo the Velcro and slide the cover over the plastic pad with the Velcro facing downwards and the surface with the black webbing facing outwards. Secure in place with the Velcro. Attaching the hinged lateral covers. To attach the lateral covers, undo the Velcro and slide the cover over the plastic moulding with the Velcro facing downwards and the eyelet upwards. Secure in place with the Velcro. Attaching the headrest cover. To attach the headrest cover, align the headrest cover with the front of the moulding and wrap the cover over both ends, securing in place with the zips. Ensure to align the cover so that the zip is closest to the bottom edge. Attaching the footrest cover. To attach the footrest cover, first remove any hardware or straps that are attached to the footrest. Place the cover over the top surface of the footrest so that the raised sides of the cover align with the back and sides of the footrest. 
secure on the underside using the straps. Attaching the pommel cover. To attach the pommel cover, undo the Velcro and slide the cover over the plastic pad with the Velcro facing downwards. Secure in place with the Velcro. Attaching the protraction pad cover. To attach the protraction pad cover, undo the Velcro and slide the cover over the plate work and insert the extension piece into the lateral cover. Attaching the lateral bracket cover. To attach the lateral bracket cover, undo the Velcro and wrap the cover over the plate work. Secure in place with the Velcro and insert the extension tab into the lateral cover. Clinical setup for postural management. The clinical setup of the BME seat should be completed by a technically and clinically competent person who has been trained in the use of the product. Set the backrest height, seat depth, and foot plate height before placing the child in the seat. These can be fine tuned when the child is in the seat. Adjusting seat depth on basic seat. To adjust the seat depth on the basic seat, Loosen the left and right bolts on the underside of the seat base and move forward and backward to a suitable position. Tighten both bolts to secure in place. Adjusting seat depth and leg angle, abduction and adduction on split seat. To adjust the seat depth and leg angle on the split seat, loosen the left and right bolts on the underside of the seat base and move each seat leg component separately to a suitable position. The seat leg components can be moved forward, backwards, and to 15 degrees abduction, adduction. Tighten both bolts to secure in place. Adjusting seat depth on contoured seat. To adjust the seat depth of the contoured seat, first remove the contoured cushion assembly from the seat base and remove the covers and foam. Loosen the bolts at either side of the plate and slide forward and backwards to the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in place. To achieve maximum range of seat depth, remove the bolts at either side of the seat and rotate the front section so that the short edge faces upwards. We attach the front section so that the slider and slot are re-engaged on either side. We attach the bolt with washer at either side of the seat, adjust to the desired position and tighten the bolts to secure in place. Set the front contoured foam piece into position, aligning the foam with the front of the plate work. The seat depth of the plate on the seat core will need to be adjusted to match. Adjusting hip width on contoured seat. To adjust the hip width on the contoured seat, the left and right hip pads can be repositioned on the Velcro base where the short dashed lines aid positioning and alignment. Align the back edge of the pads with the back edge of the plate work. Adjusting the askew shelf. To adjust the askew shelf, first remove the greater trochanter supports. Remove the ischial shelf from the Velcro. Place in desired position. Replace the greater trochanter supports. Adjusting hip pad width on basic and split seat, basic backrest. To adjust the hip pad width on the basic backrest, release the snap fastener of the backrest cushion to gain access to the adjustment bolt. Loosen the bolt and adjust inward or outward to the desired position. Tighten the bolt to secure in place. Adjusting the hip pad width on basic and split seat, moderate and complex backrest. To adjust the hip pad width on the moderate and complex backrest, locate the adjustment bolt at the back of the molding. Loosen the bolt and adjust inward or outward to the desired position. Tighten the bolt to secure in place. Adjusting hip pad height and angle. To adjust the hip pad height, remove the two bolts and reset into the adjacent hole combinations. Ensure to move the nuts located in the recesses at the back of the molding,
down into the corresponding recesses. The hip pad assemblies can also be swapped left to right to achieve additional height options. To adjust the hip pad angle, loosen the two bolts and position at the desired angle. Tighten the bolts to secure in place. Adjusting height of backrest. To adjust the height of the backrest, loosen the bolts of the backrest height adjustment clamp and raise or lower the backrest telescoping tubes to the desired height. To adjust the backrest down from the highest position, press in the snap fastener at the side of the tube and push downwards. Tighten the bolts of the backrest height adjustment clamp to secure in position. Adjusting height of individual pads on moderate and complex backrests. The moderate and complex backrest pads have two clamp options, the basic or complex clamp. To adjust the height of the basic clamp, Loosen the bolts and slide the clamp up or down the backrest tubes to the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in position. To adjust the height of the complex clamp, loosen the bolts and slide the clamp up or down the backrest tubes to the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in position. Adjusting depth of sacral section, moderate and complex only. To adjust the depth of the complex clamp, Loosen the bolt at either side of the clamp. Adjust the depth by moving the backrest section forwards or backwards to the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in position. Adjusting angle of sacral section, moderate and complex only. To adjust the angle of the complex clamp, loosen the bolts of the clamp. Adjust the angle by rotating the backrest section in all axes to the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in place. Adjusting depth of middle backrest section, complex only. To adjust the depth of the complex clamp, loosen the bolt at either side of the clamp. Adjust the depth by moving the backrest section forwards or backwards to the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in position. Adjusting angle of middle backrest section. Complex only. To adjust the angle of the complex clamp, loosen the bolts of the clamp. Adjust the angle by rotating the backrest section in all axes to the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in position. Adjusting depth of shoulder section, complex only. To adjust the depth of the complex clamp, loosen the bolt at either side of the clamp. Adjust the depth by moving the shoulder section forwards or backwards to the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in position. Adjusting angle of shoulder section, complex only. To adjust the angle of the complex clamp, loosen the bolts of the clamp. Adjust the angle by rotating the backrest section in all axes to the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in position. Adjusting angle of shoulder wings, moderate or complex only. To adjust the angle of the shoulder wings, unzip the cover on both sides to access the adjustment bolt from above. Loosen the bolt and move the shoulder wing to the desired position. Tighten the bolt to secure in position and zip up the cover. Adjusting footrest length. To adjust the footrest height, loosen the bolt and lengthen or shorten the height of the footrest to the desired position. Tighten the bolt to secure in position. For the individual footrests, the height can be adjusted independently. For the one-piece footrests, the bolts need to loosen simultaneously to allow for adjustment. Adjusting foot stem angle, knee angle. To adjust the foot stem angle, loosen the bolt and rotate the foot stem to the desired position. Tighten the bolt to secure in position. For the two-piece footrest, the angle can be adjusted independently. For the one-piece footrest, the bolts need to loosen simultaneously to allow for adjustment. Adjusting footrest angle, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. To adjust the angle of the footrest to accommodate dorsiflexion and plantar flexion on the two-piece footplate, loosen or tighten the hand knob underneath the footplate to the desired position. 
To adjust the angle of the footrest to accommodate dorsiflexion and plantar flexion on the one-piece footplate, loosen or tighten the bolt on the top surface of the footplate to the desired position. Adjusting sandals. To position the user's feet in the sandals, secure the Velcro straps provided so the foot is held in place. The strap should be placed over the bridge of the foot and over the toes. The front strap can be fed through one of two slots on either side of the sandals, depending on the size of the user's feet. To adjust the sandal position on the footplate, loosen the knob and move to the desired position. Tighten the knob to secure in place. Adjusting laterals, width, height and angle. To adjust the lateral height, width and angle, loosen the bolt at the back of the backrest. Adjust the height, width and angle to the desired position and tighten to secure in place. Adjusting laterals, depth. To adjust the lateral depth, Open the Velcro of the cover to gain access to the adjustment bolt. Loosen the bolt and adjust forward or backward to the desired position. Tighten the bolt to secure in place. Reattach the Velcro cover. Adjusting armrest height. The armrest can be adjusted into several incremental height positions. To adjust the armrest height, loosen the bolt which rests off-center from the midline of the plate. With the end of the tool still in the bolt head, slide the bolt across to the other side of midline, which will allow height adjustment of the armrest up and down. To secure, slide the bolt head back to the original off-center position into one of the several incremental height positions and tighten the bolt to secure in place. Adjusting armrest angle. To adjust the armrest angle, locate the cam lever in the center of the armrest. Raise the cam lever to unlock and change the angle of the armrest to the desired position. Secure by lowering the cam lever to the locked position. Adjusting armrest depth. To adjust the armrest depth, remove the bolts to separate the PU pad from the plate work. Reposition the pad in one of the three positions and insert the bolts. Tighten the bolts to secure in place. Adjusting headrest. To adjust the headrest, loosen the bolts. Adjust the headrest height, depth and angle into the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in place. Adjusting headrest lateral angle. To adjust the angle of the headrest laterals, unzip the cover on both sides to access the adjustment bolt from above. Loosen the bolt and move the headrest lateral to the desired position. Tighten the bolt to secure in position and zip up the cover. Adjusting tray angle. To adjust the tray angle, locate the cam lever in the center of the armrest. Raise the cam lever to unlock and change the angle of the armrest tray to the desired position. Secure by lowering the cam lever to the locked position. Adjusting elbow blocker positioning. To adjust the elbow blocker, loosen the bolts and slide the pad along the slots into the desired position. Tighten the bolts to secure in place. Adjusting femoral guides, width and angle. To adjust the width and angle of the femoral guides, lift the seat cushion up at the front to gain access to the bolts. On the basic seat, there are femoral guides on the outside of the seat only. On the split seat, there are four sets of femoral guides. Loosen the bolts and move to the desired position. Tighten to secure in place. Adjusting the backrest angle. Through the backrest recline mechanism and through the backrest interface at the base of the backrest. To adjust the back angle through the backrest recline mechanism, firmly grip the backrest, locate the locking levers at the rear of the seat. 
rotate both levers outwards to release the recline mechanism and move the backrest into the desired position. Return the levers to the closed position to secure in place. To adjust the back angle through the backrest interface at the base of the backrest, locate the bolt within the interface. Completely remove the bolt from the assembly. Separate the interface extrusion and end caps from the vertical tubes and rotate through 180 degrees. Slot the vertical tubes back into the interface extrusion and end caps and insert the bolt through all. Tighten the bolt with the nut to secure in place. Adjusting dynamic back strength. The resistance is adjusted by varying the air pressure and should be determined by the user's weight, seating position, seat design and personal preference. The air pressure is adjusted with an air pump supplied with every dynamic back on the main air valve of the dynamic mechanism. Take the dust cap off on the air pump, then pump to the desired strength. When at the desired strength, replace dust cap. For more information on the BME, please refer to the user manual or visit our website at lecky.com. For further information on cleaning and care, daily product inspection and safe operation, please refer to your Lecky Beamy user manual.